and we've made it. Tutorial number three. This is a short tutorial um, where we actually finally get to export from Blender to HitFilm. Yep, just going to run you through how to install the import script. If you followed the previous two tutorials, then you'll have a, a working track to export. And um, yeah, and you know, this is the fun bit. So let's get going and get compositing. If you've made it with me from one this far, well done. Um, good on you. So in this tutorial, we are going to set up the HitFilm export script and export the tracking data from Blender to native HitFilm um, composite file and import it into HitFilm. So this is the track we've um, been doing in the previous two tutorials. Uh, we've got one empty created in the middle and we are pretty much good to go. I'm just going to run over one more time. It's vital that you've got these settings here. Um, so for the sensor width um, and the focal length of the camera and the frame rate as well. Um, where is that? That's over here somewhere. Frame rate. Okay. Need to have all those correct because we I use those to mathematically calculate um, what's called zoom in hit film and if that's if you've changed these after you've tracked it, um, that's going to throw it all off. Okay, so it's just important that you get that right. So I'm going to run through you now how to install uh, the script in the hit film, and that can sometimes depending on what how your Windows is registered, there is a slight little glitch um, that pops up with an error box, um, which can be safely ignored. But I'm just going to show you what what that is and how to work around it as well, um, in case it annoys you. So you need to download the script and as usual the links are in the description in the YouTube channel. So at the moment I have it up on the HitFilm community and I'm updating it there as it goes. Um, it's very much work in progress, you know, so and I've put plenty of gotchas and things um, in here. But overall it seems to work really well, um, really quite pleased with it. So click on the download link, just got it up on Google Drive, um, it's a zip file. Okay, and it's a single Python script. Let's click download. Okay, so it's downloaded that, it's saying tiny. Um, open it into the, let's have a look at it in the folder. Okay, I've already downloaded one earlier. Uh, I'll just double click on that so you can just have a quick look at that. Experience. So there's, there's a whole, um, yeah, it's pretty messy, no laughing at my code. There's one little piece, this bit here, um, and all this is, is for writing unique IDs um, to the individual XML elements that I need to do. Um, and there's a little bug in Blender with how that's registered. I won't go into massive detail, um, but you'll see it may or may not affect you. It depends what you've been doing on your computer with C libraries and stuff like that. It affected me. Um, so there's a little workaround. But you can look at the code. I mean, there's nothing nefarious in there. Um, right. So it's actually really easy to install the scripts. I'll just close it off. So go file. And then again, millions of ways to do this, but user preferences, uh, add-ons, okay, and then install from file, and then where you download it to. Uh, let's just find that. Where are we? Mm -hmm. Downloads, okay, here. So you can just click on install from file. Okay, and you see here when I activate it, it'll probably pop up with a little error. Yeah, okay. So you can safely ignore this. I'm going to quickly show you how to fix it as well. It's just the order it loads the runtime libraries in. That will still work. And it'll only do it once when you load it up and then that'll be done. Um, but yeah, it annoyed me. So I'll show you how to fix it. So just quickly, if you browse to where your Blender is installed, Um, there's three DLLs here and these are the ones that cause the conflict on the system and you can safely just rename those or delete them. And all that does is it just forces window, um, forces Python to use the ones you've got registered in Windows rather than looking in this directory first. And because Python's like a standalone program running its own directory space, you don't have to worry about registry and stuff like that. Um, so let's just save this. So I'm just going to do a few. Actually, there's a piece in user preferences. 
um, save user settings. So I'm just going to save user settings. Close it down. I'm just going to restart Blender and we'll see if that's fixed it. There you go. You'd have got a little pop up there. That's, that's all there is. Um, so, so the next bit is actually surprisingly easy. Um, if you've been following what I said, you've got your camera set up um, fairly easily. So you just click on the camera. Um, fairly basic setup. Um, I was fiddling a little bit. Actually, let me just reset this to what I said to you. I just you can sort of straighten up the floor plane if you want. Um, but yeah, that, that's that's going to come across just fine. Um, scale I'd leave at one. It seems to come over just nicely. What I do is I multiply that by 100 as it exports. Um, it seems to work just fine. So you need to make sure that your empty is selected for multiple empties if you've created them. And shift right click to do that, otherwise it won't export them. And then you go File, Export. An option now for hit a film camera. And there's what I did earlier, I'll just save it over the top. Now in the bottom here, um, you can, well, I need to check this. And in, in the old um, script, you can only have 50 empties. I think that might not be the case anymore, but I'll need to check that. Um, here's a scale factor. You can change that if you really want to. I was just leaving it alone. Um, and then you can also do an animated empties, which is really damn cool. So you can use all the pathing um, and animation techniques in Blender and export that into HitFilm as well. I'm going to do another little tutorial on that. That's quite exciting what you could do there. Um, just leave that as it is because your empty is not animated. Um, hit export, hit film camera. That is it. Job done. Um, so I'm just going to close that now. Okay, let's open up hit film. You can see where I've been uh, researching gimbal lock, which has uh, been quite interesting with the animation export. Uh, I'll cover that in my animation tutorial, I guess, if I get around to doing that. Uh, I'll click on new project. Um, 1080p. 25 frames a second. It's important, it's important we get the same. And we're just going to import composite shot. This is the one we exported. Open that up. And here we go. Let's highlight the empty in here. Uh, empty's sitting pretty sweet. Liking the look of that. So let's just quickly test that and drop something in there. Choose one of the quick 3D effects. One bar in there. The amount of things I've set far to with this. Um, this is why it's quite important to get the, uh, the empty in. So, or quite useful anyway. So with the empty, just uh, click on the transform position. So you can see it sees where it thinks it is in 3D space. And I'll just copy that. And on the bonfire, and you can sort of parent it and stuff and things as well. I'm just doing this quickly. Paste that in there. There you go. Dropped it on top of where that is. Um, so just chuck a light in there as well. Oh, that's probably a little over the top. Okay. And let's play that through. Actually, well, let's, let's pre render it so it's not too jerky. What well, a bit of an old graphics card. But it's not too slow. Would be nice if HitFilm could actually use a CPU. Got nice big twin Xenon processors that sit around doing nothing with uh, with HitFilm, which is a bit of a shame. Perhaps we'll get that in a in a new version. Oh, I like the look of that. That's looking pretty damn sweet, to be honest. Given the uh, the jerkiness of the shot, let's just play that through. Sticking pretty well, if you ask me. Good. Seeing as I've just spent the last God knows how many hours doing this tutorial, it's quite nice that we actually ended up with something that did track in the end. <laughs> um, you could probably go back and refine the track from the previous one, um, see if you can get the error rate down some more, add some tracking points, etc. Um, but I think that shows a good proof of concept with a, you know, a, a, a slightly more difficult shot um, to track. So there you go. I um, hope you enjoyed that. And uh, yeah, look forward. To, hopefully, you can look forward to watching the animation one that's going to come out soon, um, which is yeah, I'm quite enjoying that. So, look forward to that. Great, thanks a lot.